There it is on Sydney Harbour, the long-awaited 360 camera from DJI. It's the Osmo 360. And here it is in the studio. And I've got to say, very similar sort of feel to the GoPro Max from a few years ago. I think 2019. Is it that long ago? I really like this one. So much so that the direct competitor to this should be the Insta360 X5. I don't even have that because I still use this one when I ever get the chance. But... I've got a replacement for this, and it is now the DJI Osmo 360. The first thing you'll notice is just how sharp the image is. It's incredible on that tiny screen on the back, even when I zoomed in, you could tell that this is a very sharp 8K sensor. And why I say it's sharp, even though others claim to be 8K, is it's a square sensor, so it makes better use of the surface area. Remember, there's a circular image going onto that sensor and the square sensor from DJI makes sense and it does a great job in making sure that it's very, very sharp. Of course, you'll get great dynamic range as well and I was impressed with that on the boat. There were some dark areas around the ferry and some bright areas, obviously, as the sun came out on the harbour. This will be very important later on when we talk about cars. Of course, I shot everything at the max spec, which is 8K 50 frames a second. 50 frames a second is ideal for real life. It really does look like you're looking out the window, and that's what you sort of want with a 360 video because it is the closest to replicating what's around you, especially if you wear a headset or play with the motion later on. I love it. So with 50 frames a second and 8K, this 360 video on the DJI camera is really impressive. And although primarily used for video, a lot of people still do pictures and you can get a stonking 120 megapixel photo out of this thing. Real-time stitching of the two images to give you that seamless look is pretty good. Of course, if you get too close to the lenses, you will see the line. So if you're talking to the camera, either avoid that stitch line, which is on the side, or don't get too close. Stabilisation is excellent whether you're getting the horizon correct or Rocksteady 3.0 working overtime to keep me steady and the camera steady on the boat. Great job on Sydney Harbour. When you go on the road, often people forget SD cards. I did have mine in there, but I didn't even use it because it comes with 105 gigabytes of built-in storage. And if you're used to using DJI gear from the last couple of years, you'll note in drones and the latest action cameras, they have that capability as well. That's a huge plus for DJI. And speaking of action cameras, you can just use one lens at a time. Luckily for me, the camera was firmly attached to that quarter 20 screw at the end of the selfie stick. That invisible selfie stick really is invisible. Look how far I'm away from the back of the boat and it was able to sit over that choppy water with no risk of it falling in. It shoots in 10-bit. I was using the normal profile to start with, then I changed to D-Log M, giving you great flexibility in post. So whether you're doing a point of view or selfie shot, this is how it handles the rain. You really do get the best of both worlds, and it performed really well. It was very dark at times on the harbour when I was testing the camera down at Circular Quay. They did a pretty good job. I did the outdoors. They only knew this is a new camera. And I also did it downstairs, going in the lift, that was pretty cool. Car park level six, doors opening. And then walking down to the car. So this is AK, okay, 50 frames a second. How's the stability? That is nasty. The other great thing about 360 cameras is car videos. They're ideal because you have one camera in the middle, like I have set up here with the Osmo, and it can shoot all around the car in one go. The problem with many of these cameras is they don't have enough resolution, so if you want to punch in on some aspect of that shot, it looks a bit blurry. 8K helps a lot with this camera, and also the dynamic range, because cars can get really bright in one area and really dark in others. But you don't want that really muddy HDR look. You want it to pop still and I think this does a great job. In fact, I think this Osmo 360 is the ideal car camera for inside and outside the vehicle if you're doing car videos.
just to show you the external shots. So I used an old selfie stick, attached it to my magnetic clamps that stick really strongly. They're from Small Rig, by the way. I had that right at the front of the bonnet, or as you say in the US, the hood. And over on the other side of the car, and taking that shot was the Action 5 stuck on the same system. Once again, the shot is floating in mid-air above the car. So driving through the streets looks fantastic. And I think that resolution, that crisp 8K image, just takes a vehicle to the next level because of the lines are just beautifully done when rendered out in that 360 view, whether you've got it flattened out or whether you're using it in a spherical environment like a headset, as I said earlier on. Have a look how it handles the car park. So a lot of dark areas here. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with it. So the app is pretty good. It's pretty intuitive because you're able to use your fingers and move around with keyframes the various angles you want to use with 360 video. That's the beauty of 360 video. You can just pinch and pull and really create a narrative just from one shot. That's the most amazing thing. If you want to really muscle up and use a computer, then you can use DJI Studio if they keep evolving the software. I think it could be a nice little editor. And there is a Premiere plugin. I used to use Premiere Pro and I might try it out just for the sake of reviewing it, but I'm a black magic resolve guy. Now, if you want to play with this imagery yourself, I've done an 8K version of this in 360, so you'll be able to play with that on YouTube. Check out our channel for that. All right, give us your uh, comments below and tell me if you're going to go for the DJI, stick with the Insta360, or you're going to hang out for the GoPro Max 2. We'll see you next time on ImageMatrix.tech. Thank <laughs> you.